Welcome back. Stephen, you've had a number of portfolios over the years since entering politics. Which is the one that's closest to your heart, the one that speaks to you the most? I mean, they're all extremely important jobs, but was there one portfolio that you, that you had that really found you springing out of bed in the morning because it was something that you could really stick your teeth uh, into? Probably two portfolios. The, the first one that really um, caused me to spring out of bed in the morning was, was natural resources. Yeah. Um, I'd always been very interested in the environment, and uh, but what natural resources did was open up uh, the expanse of Queensland to me and its um, and, 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 and its diversity, environmental dis diversity, uh, and it took me particularly out west into the southwest, into country around Gundawindi and what have you, and and I ended up meeting people, farmers who um, weren't what I would consider to be traditional uh, farmers. These were hard-nosed, educated business people who mm. had a passion for the environment and they took me on a real journey um, in terms of how, they, how you manage the land in, a, in an environmentally sustainable way. And uh, a lot of those, those folk that I met um, in the uh, early days of that portfolio who were prepared to spend a bit of time with the city boy yeah. to educate him, uh, have remained very good friends and uh, uh, it was a, a really personally enriching experience to be Minister for Natural Resources mm. and and we, we had to tackle some big issues uh, like stopping broad scale tree clearing. Mm. Um, that was that was really hard yakka um, because there had been a, a historical culture of opening up the land, making it productive. It was the basis of, of, of selling Queensland, was open the land up, wasn't and, it? And in fact, governments encouraged it. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, some of the, the original leases of the old lands department required you to clear the land as a condition of lease. And now government was coming in saying, well, actually, we're going to now stop you doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I say there was a former Premier who used to like getting his picture taken doing just ex that. Exactly <laughs> right, exactly right. Um, so we finally achieved that in 2005, 2006, but it was... It was a tough campaign. Yeah. Uh, government, you know, landholders, ag force, at each other. You know, that, uh, it, it was tough. But what we delivered in the end was Australia's largest reduction in greenhouse gas emissions uh, that have ever been achieved, mm. and that was the extent of tree clearing that was going on. But it was more the sustainability um, side of natural resources that I um, really did uh, embrace and become very interested in. The other portfolio and people might find it strange, was, was health. Mm. Um, uh, it's, it's a tough gig, um, being Minister for Health. Mm. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. But, and, and I know other former health ministers have this view too, that it's also one of the most personally satisfying ones. Uh, if you take away the media, the headlines, the controversy, yeah. your day-to-day -day work actually does make a difference. You actually do um, get to contribute to improving health outcomes. Mm. For me, um, I concentrated on patient safety and, and understanding that I came in after the Bundaberg Commission of Inquiry, yeah. patient safety was a, a major issue. And again, there was a lot of resistance from uh, the medico-political community to enforcing tougher standards on, on patient safety. Um, but again, we, 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 we got through that and uh, to the extent now, I can quite proudly and honestly say we have the safest health system um, anywhere in Australia and possibly the safest, one of the safest systems in the world. Doctors long known, I guess, for having a bit of a reputation as being a law unto themselves, mm. as the final arbiters on what's good for us and what's bad. The AMA is quite a, quite a, mm. a powerful political lobby. Yep. Um, a lot of pressure, I would imagine, brought to, you on, to bear on you in those days. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things that I was really struck with, that when you're looking at uh, hospital infection rates, um, one of the um, means, if not the most common means of, of transmitting infections is from doctors not washing their hands. Mm. I was struck when uh, I actually went to the US and went to uh, a children's hospital in New York. The nurses were actually running a campaign there that, and w with badges on that said, doctor, have you washed your hands yet? And in fact, the, the, the patients themselves were wearing it. So it's not, it wasn't a Queensland thing, it wasn't an Australian thing, it was yeah. a worldwide phenomena. I actually brought that campaign back here, um, but I sort of twisted a bit by announcing to a nurses' conference that I wanted them, when they saw me go around the hospital, 
say, Minister, have you washed your hands yet? As a way to empower the nurses to start taking the doctors on on these fundamental issues. Mm. And, um, I well remember the first time I, I was taken to task by a couple of nurses. They actually said to me, they've never been so empowered um, by what I invited them to do to challenge me as minister to wash my hands as I was going from room to room, ward to ward. Mm. They, uh, it's, it's those kinds of things that I, t I took away from the, my time as health minister that I'm really v quite proud about. Yeah. Uh, d you know, despite the headlines and the controversy, which will always dog every health minister, uh, because you're dealing with a, a department with now over 80,000 people working 24-7 Literally, as we speak, someone as you know, out there somewhere mm. um, is doing something that they shouldn't. Sometimes you hear about it. Um, sometimes you just read it on the front page of the Courier Mail. Um, but it's, it's an exciting gig, though, um, and, but one that if you dedicate yourself to it can be really very personally satisfying. system in Queensland getting better, do you think? Waiting lists decreasing? I've, I've got a personal yep. instance where I'm sort yep. of on a waiting list and it looks like it could be yep. quite a few years before I can actually get to see a specialist. Yes. Um, despite, you know, as, as I said, despite the headlines, um, I will maintain, and I, and I believe the evidence is there, we do happen to have one of the best health systems in the world. Can it be better? Absolutely. Are we seeing things improve? Um, yes, we are. But things like being on a, on a waiting list it, that is really problematic. Um, one of the things that I inherited was um, an, a chronic underinvestment in clinical staff. We didn't have enough doctors, we didn't mm. have nurses. That has improved markedly, uh, but the simple fact that we are all living longer, and as we live longer, we contract more and more chronic diseases, um, that is, is adding to the demand. Uh, so even though we We've expanded our health system markedly over the last half dozen years. Uh, the demand for health services is increasing about twice population growth. Yeah. That is the number one issue um, that we will need to deal with now and very much into the years ahead. And, and probably a perfect example of just how grey the business of politics can be, mm. trying to serve or, or fulfil the wishes of the media and your constituents and, and the members of your party and the party itself. There's so many different aspects of it. Uh, there is, and I mean, you mentioned uh, the, the media. Um, there is no secret that uh, I'm not the media's greatest fan in state parliament. Mm. Um, I have a view that, that frankly, we're, we're pretty poorly served by the media in how they report and represent politics in this state. But now that we've moved to that 24-hour news cycle, I think it's just become even tougher, and even tougher for the media um, to report what's going on um, in, a, in a way that informs people properly. And I guess uh, one of the things I'm looking forward to when I, uh, when I retire at the next election is, is that's the thing I won't miss, is, is dealing with that media circus. Um, it's... Uh, I've, I've always been troubled by the way issues have been represented yeah. to, the, to the population who, after all, um, need to be properly informed about often complex issues. And I don't think they get that chance. Yeah, yeah, I know where you're coming from. You're watching Meet the Ministers. My name is Sean Bindley and I'll join you again after the break.